month of August, we want to talk with Jaron Martis, Director of Consumer Research at Thomson Reuters Proprietary Research, and the number is... 0.2, up 0.2 percent, two tenths of a percent. Jaron is weaker than expected. What's behind this number? Well, it coincides with our latest reading on the Thomson Reuters consumer sentiment, which is it's all about the psyche of the consumer. You can give them lower gasoline prices, uh, personal income can be up, but if they're seeing that you know the stock market is very volatile, the global markets are volatile, that's instilling fear in them. You know, they see risk mm -hmm. in a time when the U.S. is still recovering, and as a result, you know they're being very, very cautious on spending. Yes, so last month we saw record auto sales, but that's all being driven by lower gas prices that is driving the consumer, okay, this is a good time to buy a car. So we're seeing that in general, you know, consumers are leaning more towards experiences mm -hmm. over than actual buying material things. There's been a whole change of the consumer since the last recession. Yeah, the sentiment clearly matters. That stock market move had to have mattered. And again, this is a miss versus expectations. I spent a lot of time modeling the basket of expenditures, the pressures that we're not talking about every day, yeah. but they are the pressures. Maria mentioned health care. Yeah. Health care and rent, are those big yes. problems that you see when you when you look at the data? Those are huge problems. And if, you know, despite the fact that we are, that the job market is improving, if the consumer feels, you know, that that there's still uncertainty in the economy when they're seeing all the mixed data, they're going to hold back on spending. Mm. They still have that rent to pay, like you said. Um, Health care is still pretty up high. So those are the primary things that are eating up the consumer. Yeah, and this psychology kind of works into the savings rate as well. Because they may not be saving to spend later on. They may be saving because they're worried they're about worried. that health care yes. cost. They and this, this is why the savings rate is so high in China, yes. is that there's no insurance, and so people save in case they get yep. hit, by, hit by a car. So there's a same, in a slightly different way, there's a, a same phenomenon probably happening in the Absolutely. And you know, retailers are paying attention. Um, they just reported earnings last month, and they have been issuing negative guidance. Yeah. In the beginning of August, we saw we received about 22 negative guidance, and that's up to 52 today for yeah. earnings. Cutbacks are going to come there as well. Yes. And so when you look at projections for the consumer discretionary, for the earnings growth rate for the S&P 500, you're looking at lower estimates compared to a year ago for the holiday mm -hmm. season. So can the Federal Reserve raise interest rates in this weak economy? Yeah. We were expecting a, a lower showing than the mm -hmm. month before, but this is much weaker than expected. Well, 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 you strip out autos, you got up one-tenth of a percent. It's bad. And the Fed's empire I just, survey also And down. they can because guess what? The Federal Reserve is unelected. They can do whatever they want. They're unaccountable. Both parties support them, Republicans and Democrats, just like in the 1970s. They're accountable to the well-being of the economy. Well, I, allegedly. At least their, 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 their perception of that. Yeah, but as far as I can tell, the, the, the median consumer in this country makes 50 grand and has to spend 50 just to eat and have a place to sleep. I was going to say, I just, based on what you just said, I just think this excuse of like the psyche of the consumer, I just, I, I think that's kind of a lame excuse. Mm. I think the numbers are still really bad. This recovery has been slow. It's yeah. It's been dismal. Wage growth has been stagnant. The unemployment rate, that headline rate, it doesn't mean anything to the middle class right now. I mean, still looking at youth unemployment rate, that people aren't getting jobs out of college. They're not buying homes. They're not buying cars. There's really not a lot of positive news to point to and in this you're economy. you're just talking about the U.S. story. Now, layer on on top of that the fact that the U.S.'s trading yes. partners are all seeing recession or slowdown. Exactly. You guys sound more bearish than me. Jordan, do we, do when, <laughs> when, when bearish, we bearish, just to, to blame this on I psyche. No, it's, no, this no, is, this is about it. policy. It's this is about regulation, keeping businesses in check. This is about the cost of health care. Costs have gone up. Why mm -hmm. would companies hire new workers when they have to uh, yeah. put benefits and hire? Uh, now we're talking about $15 minimum wage. There's all these pressures coming yeah. at businesses. 